Hey guys, this is part one of a series of videos in which I'm going to go through the NCLEX RN Comprehensive ATI Review. This is edition 18, 2018. In this video, it's going to be all about the NCLEX and test taking strategies to pass it. Section 1, about the NCLEX. The NCLEX is a pass or fail exam. There is no score given. It's a computer adaptive testing, so that means that it selects the questions based on your answers before. So if you got a maternity question, you got it wrong, it'll probably try and give you a harder one or give you an easier one based on whatever you answered before. Um, you pass when you reach the minimal point of competency. It is given all year round. There is no minimum time, but there's a max of six hours. Only 2% of people actually go over the six hours, so I wouldn't worry about time. You could take it up to eight times a year with 45 days in between each time you take it. The computer will stop when either of the three stuff occur. Number one is you finish all the 265 questions. Number two is that you reach a max amount of time, which is six hours. Number three is that you are confident above or below the passing standard. So if you're above the passing standard, you will pass. If you're below, you will fail. But either way, it will stop. Um, you cannot skip or return to questions. Also, there are 15 unmarked experimental questions. They do not affect your score. There are breaks, but they're optional, and they are part of your six hours. The minimum you could pass with is 75 questions, and the maximum is 265. Section 2. So the NCLEX test is revised every three years. The registration process is as follows. Number one, you're going to apply for a license with the Board of Nursing. Number two, you're going to pay and register with Pearson. You could do it online or on the phone. And you're going to get authorized to test. Number three, you're going to schedule your exam. Remember to bring your ID, which could be a license or a passport or something like that. Section three. So these are the type of questions that you're going to see on the NCLEX. So the first type and most common type is going to be a multiple choice. There are going to be four options and you're going to pick the best answer. There's most probably going to be two that are going to come out and they're going to be correct, but you're going to pick the best one. The next type of questions are going to be fill in the blanks. These are calculation problems. A calculator will be provided online. Make sure to look at rounding if it says to round to the tenth or the hundredth. The next type of question is going to be drag and drop, also called order response. You're going to place a sequence in correct order. The next type of question is going to be multiple response, also called select all that apply. These are probably the hardest. You're going to be given five to six options and you're going to select the ones that are correct. They could all be correct and no partial credit is given. The next type of question is hotspot. You're going to point and click wherever it should be. Let's say it says where is the aortic valve. You're going to point and click your X wherever it should be. The next type of question which also could be with another type of question, like multiple choice, are going to be multimedia. You're going to have um, a chart, it says click the exhibit, and it's going to have, let's say, vitals, or you're going to have a graphic, and you're going to have to click that. Or there's going to be a sound, like, let's say, lung sounds, and the headphones are going to be provided for you. Section 4 is Assess and Remediate. I'm going to skip that question because it's all about ATI and how to use this book and stuff like that. Section 5 is test taking strategies. So the first one you could use is a stop. S in the stop stands for story. What is the story? What's the issue? Is it asking you about a test, a medical diagnosis, or a medication? And who's the patient in it? Is it an immunosuppressed patient? Is it an elder patient? Is it a pregnant woman? The T stands for think. What's the keyword? What's the STEM word? Is it asking you for further teaching, which means that the patient's doing it incorrectly? Or is it asking you for early signs and symptoms, late? You want to look at the keyword. The O stands for option. You want to look at all your options. Before even looking, you want to think of your answer in your mind, and then you want to look through each question at a time. The P in stop stands for pick. You want to pick the correct question and don't change your answer. Another test-taking technique is to use the Maslow's hierarchy. So you're going to go from the bottom up. You're going to first, if there's a patient that needs water versus a patient that needs self-actualization, you're going to go for the person who needs the water before the person that needs love or like something like that. The next thing that you're 
that you could use is the ABCs. This is really important. You want to use airway breathing circulation. So first you're going to go for airway, then you're going to go for breathing, then you're going to go for circulation. Um, also, you want to do, always do acute before chronic and unstable before stable. So if you have an acute situation where someone um, has an anaphylactic reaction and can't breathe versus a chronic with someone with COPD and has low oxygen, you're going to go for the acute. And you're going to go for unstable versus stable. The only exception to both of these are that when you're triaging or mass casualty, you want to go for the most stable first because when you're evacuating a building, you want to take the person who's not attached to lines and, and not attached to um, oxygen and stuff like that because they're most likely to survive. Also, you want to go for the least restricted first except usually in emergency because if you're in an emergency and someone's coding, you're not going to be like, let me auscultate their lungs. But in general, you're going to go for the most restricted first. Another thing that you should think of is ADOPI which stands for Assessment, Diagnosis, Outcome, Identification, Planning, Implementing, and Evaluation. You probably heard this before. It's the nursing process. So that you're going to want to do before. You want to assess before you diagnose and before you plan like that. Um, another point is um, early versus late signs and symptoms. So in general, early signs and symptoms are more generalized, nonspecific, like a fever, um, stuff like that. And late is very specific and severe. So if it's affecting your kidney, you're going to see like something that has to do with your kidney and more severe. Okay, now the next topic we're going to talk about is safe and effective delegation. Okay, so it's going to be the RN that could delegate to the UAP, LPN, wherever you call it. Um, so this is what the RN is going to do and the LPN is not going to do and the UAP is not going to do. The RN is going to do all the initial teaching. LPNs could reinforce afterwards, but they can't initially teach. RNs are going to do all mission assessment and vitals to get accurate baseline. After that, the UAP or the LPNs could take the vitals and stuff like that. But the RN is always going to do the initial one. The RN is going to make client care assignments. The LPN can pick which client to go to and stuff like that. The RN will never delegate an unstable patient to an LPN and UAP. Only stable patient. So if a person's having a heart attack, you're not going to give the LPN to take his vitals or to give him medication or stuff like that. Another really important point is to remember, whatever you see in clinicals and practice is not necessarily the answer to the NCLEX. Go according to what you learn and what the NCLEX says, not according to what you see in your practice. Section 6, the day of the exam. So before the exam, you want to plan for everything. You want to get everything you need already the night before. Your ID has to match your name on your application. You want to arrive 30 minutes before testing. You want to verify the route to the exam and test drive it before. Or if you don't want to test drive it, put it in ways at the same time you would go and add or give or take 10, 15 minutes, um, depending on where you live and the traffic. Um, pay attention to your physiological needs, like you have to sleep before, have a meal before, um, go to the bathroom before, and dress right. In the examination room, there's no hats, scarves, gloves, etc. allowed. Um, during the test, you want to read and listen carefully to every question and pay attention to the key words. Um, you don't want any distractions. You want to focus on each question. Don't worry about your time. Only 2% of people actually go over the six hours. I would go through each question. Um, and you want to think positive. And just some other tips. Don't cram the night before. Um, do something enjoyable the night before. Deep breathe and visualize your success. And hopefully you'll pass.